childhood sweethearts decide to sleep in cement forever to prove their love for each other. Sophie's family had just moved to France from Poland, but she is bullied because she is Polish. The kids in her class yell at her and throw her things on the floor, and no one wants to be friends with her. Only the driver picks up her things. Then the boy Julian handed her his favorite music box, but then he said, <laughs> Sophie's my frownsy. She thought that since it was given to her, it was hers. Julian would have to pay to get it back. So Julian jumped on the school bus and released the brakes to punish the naughty kids for bullying her. Sophie burst into laughter, and so began a game of dear or dear not. The one who holds the music box can tell the other to do anything. Once the other player completes the task, the music box belongs to the other player. And the next game begins. And so the two kids got bolder and bolder, messing up in class, peeing their pants in front of the principal. They even spilled ink all over the teacher's face. The principal angrily separated the two children, but they were still brought to the principal's office for making the same mistakes. They didn't care about the scolding of their parents. It's not the content of the bet that matters to them, it's the righteousness and care of the other. But children's loyalty is ridiculous to adults. Julian's father disliked Sophie. Julian's mom has cancer and won't live much longer. Dad always said it was his fault. Little Julian asked his mom. Mama, tu vas mourir? Did he do too many stupid things to make mom sick? Mom said in reply that all you need to do is to remember that I love you. Sophie's sister was getting married. The two kids were hiding under the table when they sneaked into the wedding. Sophie asked Julian if he'd dare say no to the priest on his wedding day. Julian replied, I dare without hesitation. Then they talked about what they wanted to be when they grew up. Julian said he wanted to be a tyrant with many wives and many servants. Sophie, however, said she wanted to be a piece of apricot custard. That surprised Julian. They then make a scene at the wedding, playing tablecloths and sneaking away. When Julian returned home, his father dragged him to the hospital. His mother's condition has worsened and he's devastated. Then Sophie arrives, but all he wants is for Sophie to leave. Because his father doesn't like her, Sophie was about to say something and then she said, Yeah, I'm just a playmate. She turned around and threw the bouquet into the trash can. Inside the hospital room, Julian suddenly fell down. His mom opened her eyes and worried about him with the last of her strength. Then she stopped breathing. Julian's mom passed away. His father thinks he killed her. All Julian could do was cry and argue. At his mom's funeral, everyone looked sad. Only Sophie sang the Song of the Roses in a bright dress and a beautiful wreath. A child's world is always so simple. She just wanted to make her friends happy. Julian looked at her and smiled. His father, despite his dislike for Sophie, realized that only Sophie could make his son happy. So he called Sophie's sister and asked her to stay at his house. That night, the two kids shared a bed. Julian offered to let them sleep at Sophie's tomorrow, but Sophie immediately refused and made Julian promise never to come to her house. She seemed to be hiding something. Julian doesn't understand but agrees. This girl is wearing her bra on the outside of her shirt to take the test. People around her looked at her like she was stupid, but the girl was very relaxed. In fact, it's a bet between her and the boy. Ever since Julian handed Sophie a music box when she was bullied by her classmates 10 years ago, the two of them have been playing a game of dear or dear not, and it never stops. The game has become more and more daring since they were kids. Julian was flirting with another girl during Sophie's exam. Their flirting made Sophie walk out of the classroom in a huff, no longer interested in the exam. She went to Julian and told him that the girl had two things going for her, a nice pair of earrings and an affair with a gym teacher. Julian thinks she's jealous. How could Sophie admit that? She also instructed Julian to cheat the girl's earrings. So Julian finds the girl and does something intimate in the bathroom and manages to get her earrings. Then he took his trophy and showed it off to Sophie. Sophie threw the earrings down the drain. She sees that Julian doesn't react and realizes that he thinks it's a game. Then they took on the challenge of slapping the gym teacher. At first, the gym teacher could fight back, but these two maniacs were always there for him. It wasn't long before the gym teacher was in a trance when they decided to play the game of kicking the gym teacher in the balls. The gym teacher was so irritated that he beat them both up. Sophie's arm was injured on the way back. She looked Julian straight in the eye and asked him. Then she jumped on top of the car. Of course Julian would dare. And they kissed amidst the curses of the drivers and the honking of the cars. They ran away and left. Hand in hand, Sophie asked him if he dared to love her. Without hesitation, Julian answered, I dare. This made Sophie think that Julian only considered loving her as a game. She ran away in despair. It seems they dare to do anything but admit they love each other. Julian and his father had a heated argument. It turns out, he hasn't spoken to his father in 10 years because of Sophie's words. His father asked Julian to choose between him and Sophie. 
Julian picks up the music box his father threw away and goes to Sophie's house to show her his love. He wants to leave with her to escape his father's control. But Sophie, with her low self-esteem, is afraid to say yes. Julian leaves, leaving the music box behind. Sophie was devastated. She thought long and hard about it and didn't want to lose her love. So she took the music box and went to Julian to confess her love. But Julian is disheartened by Sophie's previous rejection. He decided to follow his father's advice and prepare for the exams. So he told Sophie indifferently, I'll see you in a year. Sophie deliberately said she wanted to fall in love with another guy despite him. Julian chased after her and tried to keep her but he couldn't say anything. Until Sophie got on the bus, Julian finally said, I love you. But Sophie couldn't hear him anymore. It's been for years since they left each other. Julian found Sophie and invited her to a candlelight dinner. In a romantic atmosphere, Julian spoke touching words of love. Sophie couldn't hide the smile on her face. When Julian took out the proposal ring and said that this wedding needs you, Sophie couldn't wait to say yes. But Julian's next words were, <laughs> Sophie's smile disappeared. He said, Do you remember the day you said, I never dare hurt you? Now I'm telling you I dare. His wedding was on schedule. Sophie came uninvited. When Julian took his wedding vows, Sophie threw a music box at him and asked him to say no, as he had said at his sister's wedding, but Julian said yes anyway. And then Sophie objected. His wedding was ruined. His father cut off his relationship with Julian. Julian was overcome with mixed emotions. He took Sophie to the railroad tracks and blindfolded her. The train is coming fast. The boy takes the girl he loves to the tracks and blindfolds her. The train is coming and he doesn't care. The girl thought it was a prank, but her heart broke when she heard the train whistle coming closer and closer, and he still didn't react. Just a second before the train was due to arrive, Sophie jumped off the tracks and passed the speeding train. This made her more disappointed in Julian than ever before. Holding back her tears, she said the next bet, I will never see you again for 10 years. Then she turned around and left. 10 years have passed, Julian had married and had children. But he never forgot Sophie. Without the game of dare, Julian seems to have a happy family. But he lives like a zombie. His days are filled with meaningless living. Sophie is married to Sergei, the soccer player. Sergei's news is all over the streets and TV. It made Julian sick of soccer. On the night of his 10-year appointment with Sophie, Sophie sent a music box with a card saying, Dear you. Of course Julian did. He ignored his wife and rushed out. The two of them, who hadn't seen each other for 10 years, smiled at each other again. They started their lives with a game again. Sophie disguised her house as a break-in and called the police. Julian counted down the time and started the game. As if he'd come back to life, he drove the car at maximum speed to experience the thrill. The next moment he was in a car accident, Sophie arrives at the hospital and sees a burnout patient with a music box next to him and leaves sadly. But in reality, the real Julian was hiding and laughing. This was his gift to her. Sophie realized on the way back and told her husband to turn the car around and go back to the hospital. Nothing can stop us anymore, she says. And then Julian rushed out of his bed. They talked about their love for each other in the rain. The experience of being separated by death gives them the courage to admit their love for each other. Julian's wife tries to win him back with his children and family. Sophie's husband ran up and punched Julian. The moment he fell, it was as if he were a child, a teenager and an adult. In the end, he shattered everything and broke through his confinement to be with Sophie. Then the two of them went to a construction site and said, This time, we'll never be apart again. Concrete poured down on them, and they're not afraid of it. They embraced and kissed each other in such a way as to complete eternity. The movie ends with a pair of mischievous old people playing Sophie and Julian's childhood game on a music box. It's all so beautiful that it seems like a dream. Love Me If You Dare is a movie released in 2003. Some people think it's romantic, others think it's the love of two lunatics. As childhood friends, they already knew about each other's love, but didn't dare to admit it and chose to test it in a crazy way. In the end, they hurt themselves and the people around them. I don't think you should wait, I think you should speak now.